So welcome everyone to yet another remote Zurich Haskell meetup. Um, again, happy to see to have so many people joining and uh, looking forward to today's talk by Michali. Um, let's get started. All right. Hello, everyone. I, I, can, I cannot see you, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but probably will be able to hear you if you talk. Um, my name is Mihai. And uh, today I, I'm going to talk about Agda and Koch, not Haskell. Um, <clears throat> as far as I know, this is not the first time that we have such a talk uh, uh, on this meetup, something which is not Haskell, but more, more about theorem proving uh, uh, such systems. I think we had a talk, we actually had a talk about Agda five years ago or something like that a long time ago. I remember that. And uh, as far as I know, we also had a talk about Isabel and Idris. Uh, yeah, those, I, I wasn't present. So what I want to do uh, tonight is, uh, is not to go very much into details or um, uh, not even do like a proper uh, proper Agda introduction. My goal is to maybe um, convey the feeling what 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 it feels like to talk uh, to work with with these systems, um, uh, and uh, <clears throat> just in advance, I'm in no way uh, an expert on these systems. I'm, I'm still just, just learning them. It just somehow happened that I ended up working uh, uh, with them on a daily basis. Um, I ended up in, uh, uh, doing uh, uh, some math research uh, with a friend of mine. And, uh, and uh, at some point, we, we realized that uh, we are uh, having trouble to, to even uh, uh, follow whether what we are doing makes sense or not, whether uh, what we uh, seem to be able to prove is actually true and, and correct. And we just decided that Oh, there's there are these systems, and we just start doing doing formal uh, proofs uh, while we are still doing the research, and uh, it's still too early to to say whether uh, there's anything will come out of it. But um, but yeah, this is how I ended up learning Agda. Um, I knew a bit of cock before, just because it seemed in interesting. Uh, but again, like just very superficially, and now now I know uh, way better. Um, yeah. All right. Sorry. Does anyone know how to? Ah, yeah. Here. Uh, I will uh, stop my video from now on because it just wastes. Uh, bandwidth and you don't really need to to see me um so yeah um just a quick question uh is uh anyone one uh planning to actually follow along the light co uh, live coding um just so i know whether I should uh, uh, definitely cool. That's fun, isn't it? Right. So yeah, this is the repo. Um, I have I have some uh, some files, some uh, skeleton files in the Agda and Coq, uh, uh folders, and there's some solutions, like things I am planning to talk in the solutions directory. If you want to peek ahead um, and uh, I will try to to yeah do some 
I don't know, pauses and, uh, and wait so, uh, so you can follow along. And uh, yeah, please, please just uh, interrupt me if something not clear uh, or, uh, or, or you need some help. Yeah, so I am planning to talk about four things. Uh, start with like uh, kind of basic introduction to, to Agda, uh, to show the syntax, uh, how it works, what does it mean to uh, program with dependent types. Then I want to talk a little bit about why, why programming with dependent types is kind of the same thing as proving theorems. So this is the part I call proposition as types. Then I want to uh, compare uh, Agda with Coq. And at the end, I want to just uh, show uh, like a brief thing, what it means to actually do math uh, in, uh, in, in Agda. Right, let's get started. So, so this is our first file. We're not going to do here uh, uh, much. I just want to show you uh, an Agda file. Uh, so, yeah, my Emacs is set up in a way that when you, when you just open uh, an Agda file, it's all black and white. There is no syntax highlighting and you actually have to run a, uh, the Agda to type check it and then, then Agda will, will highlight, highlight everything. Uh, I will talk about it this more. Um, so Agda is very, very much based on Haskell. So there is a lot of similarities, but quite a bit of uh, differences. So right from the start, uh, we can see this factorial thing and, and we see a few things. So instead of column, column, we just have one column. And, uh, and the other way around for lists, uh, instead of column, we have column, column. Uh, this makes sense because uh, like the typing relationship is, it comes up way, way uh, more than, than working with lists. Another thing that what in Haskell is, is a syntactic requirement, like uppercase and lowercase, uh, in, in Agda, it's more of a, just a convention. Still, uh, types are usually uppercase. Uh, constructors, data constructors are usually lowercase. Uh, so Agda is very, very lenient on what can be an identifier. So this module is called compared to Haskell with dashes. And, and then later you see a, uh, something called plus dash com and all that. Uh, and also Agda uh, is, uh, is very much, um, well, Agda people li love Unicode. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about that. It's not my favorite decision, uh, but sometimes it, it's very nice to have to have basically unlimited supply of, of operators that you can use. Um, right. So one very important thing uh, just from the very start about Agda syntax, uh, if you don't get it right, it's like very, very, you, it's very easy to run in, into very frustrating situations in Agda. So, so Agda has a very simple, very primitive tokenizer. So everything, like any string of characters with a few exceptions like white space, brackets, braces, underscore, dot, and I think uh, uh, quotes. If you, if you have any string made out of uh, characters which are not on this uh, prohibited list, it's an identifier. 
It doesn't have to start with the letter. It doesn't have to, uh, to even contain letters. Uh, so it's, it's an identifier. Uh, so because of that, it's, uh, it's like really, if, 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 if someone don't understand that, it's, it's, it's very, very confusing. For example, what, what this line says. Uh, this line, by the way, says a kind of version of uh, commutativity of addition. It says, if we have three things, maybe they are numbers, we don't know from, uh, from, from this context, um, x, y, and something I just named x plus y, and x plus y is equals x plus y, then y plus x is also equals x plus y, right? Here, x plus y is just, a, is just an identifier, but coming from, a, from, a, from any other, any normal programming language, this is very, very weak. Um, and uh, like with usual operators, like plus, multiply, uh, and stuff, uh, it's, it's hard to ra run into this, but for example, comma can also be an operator. And then, and then uh, so for example, we can define um, a type of pairs and define a function of them, which swaps from uh, like uh, something A cross B to B cross A. And uh, like, this is like, uh, a function we could imagine, uh, but it's, it like looks ugly. And, uh, and if we are edited like this, this is a mistake because now X comma as an identifier, uh, which is applied to Y. And here Y comma is an identifier. So uh, weird. Yes. All right, it's just someone has their microphone on. Um, so be, be aware of this. And actually, like if comma is, a, is an operator, then the right hand side is actually this. And we just put it into parentheses for, for convenience, but parentheses don't even need to be there. All right, uh, so there are many more differences uh, uh, compared to Haskell and I will talk about them as, as we go on. Um, so let's start. Okay, let's do some, some ACDA definitions. Let's define the very, probably the most simple data type, bool. Um, so, right, this looks very much like uh, 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 a GADT style definition in, in Haskell. In Agra, all data definitions are, are, are in this form. There is no, um, uh, no Haskell style data definitions. Everything is, is in this form. And by the way, the uh, thing, uh, the keyboard command that I'm that I'm doing to type check this is Control C, Control L. Uh, if you go to the README here, there's here's the quick pointers for Agda. Keep this thing open. Uh, I will introduce the other uh, other Emacs. Uh, Commands, but you can always uh, you can always uh, go and and look for them here. All right. So with this, uh, yeah, um, this set. Uh, think about set as type. So bool is a type. It's called set. There are some 
some uh, legacy and some mathematical reasons for that. Uh, I will always talk about it as, as, uh, as the type of basic types. Um, so let's define some functions, say not. Right. Uh, so as I as I mentioned in in Act that they they like Unicode. So normal arrow works, but uh, I will try to use the the style of arrow that that Act the people uh, love. And uh, the way to type Unicode characters is to type uh, in Agda mode is to type backslash, and then um, for, for most characters, there is a um, very easy to remember mnemonic. So for arrow is just dash and, uh, and the greater. Uh, if you don't know how to type uh, a Unicode character, but you actually have it somewhere, uh, just do alt x and quail show key. And it will show here at the bottom that input arrow type backslash r minus or right arrow backslash r or uh, whatever. Um, so not. So not d. How, how, what, how, how do we define this? And here I want to introduce the um, one of the most powerful features of Agda is working with holes. Say um, yeah, I want to define this. I don't know how to, I don't know what, what, what it should be. Uh, I put a question mark and press control C, control L. And now I have this, this green colored hole. Uh, and I can do a bunch of stuff uh, within uh, the context of this hole. So at the bottom, it shows me uh, here. Can you see my mouse pointer actually? Can I point to things? Yes, we can see that. Cool. Um, so usually you will have more than one hole and uh, they are there at the bottom number. Uh, so the first thing that I can do is to ask Agda, what do you expect me to put in this hole? That's control C, control comma. It says the goal, uh, so the type I'm supposed to put in, in, in this hole is, is bool. And under the line, I have the context. What, what variables uh, are in the context here? And what, what are their types? Um, so, yeah, well, um, I know that I want to define this, time, uh, this function as, as, a, as a case split on this variable B. So I can, what I can do is to write the name of the variable and press control C, and here is control C, Agda make case, control C, control C. Now Agda will split uh, the, this function uh, for all the possible cases of the variable. variable. Um, and now I have two clauses I, have, I am supposed to, to fill in and, uh, and two holes. So, oh, okay, I know how to do this. For false, I want true, and I type true into the hole and press control C, control space. And same for false, uh, for true, I want false. Okay, now we have the not function de defined. Uh, right, let's define and. And. Uh, let's say x, y again. So what do I do? Um, well, let's do again a case split on x. Mm -hmm. Right. So false and anything. Well, that's actually false. Let's define from this. And true and anything is actually that thing. So I can just put y and again, control C, control space. Uh, right, so now we have these, these definitions. 
but actually they are not very Agda-like. So we have these names and, and, and we much prefer to, to work with, with nice mnemonic operators. So uh, let's make it more, more Agda-like. So instead of not, let's use the, this symbol, the mathematical symbol for, for negation. Uh, and I want to make it into uh, scratch that. Let's do and first. Um, so for and, there is this nice uh, mathematical operator, this this wedge thingy. And how how do you define an operator in Agda? It's actually uh, uh, so we cannot do the the Haskell thing, where by convention, any uh, string of operator-like characters is an operator, because here everything is an identifier. Uh, they are all the same. So somehow we have to distinguish uh, uh, operators. And Agda has this very powerful thing called, called mix, uh, mix fix notation. So for now, I'm just going to use it for, for uh, to, defining, uh, to define a binary operator. And uh, I define it like this. So you put uh, anything in the middle, so the operator that you want, and two underscores on the two signs. Like underscores are kind of showing, okay, the, this is a, these are placeholders you can stick values into here. And from this point on, I can use it as an operator and say x and y, and I want to define this, uh, and do the same thingy. Uh, so yeah, I want to do a case split on x. And for false and y, it's false. And for true and y, it's true. Okay, now it's defined. And I can, uh, uh, so, so I can use this as an operator immediately, this underscore and underscore, but um, I probably want to specify uh, what is the precedence of the, of, of the operator, and it's done in exactly the same way as in Haskell. So uh, infix, and I have to define whether it should be should associate to the left or to the right. Um, I don't know what's the convention. Let's do help. Uh, precedence, same scale from one to nine, where nine is the is the highest precedence. Okay. And I can put this uh, after or before the, the definition. Usually, uh, it makes sense to put it before uh, in case you have some kind of um, expression in the definition of your thing where you already want to use the, the precedent of this precedence and associativity of this operator, right? So for not, we don't need these. Uh, and I mentioned that I want to make it into a prefix operator. So, so not false is true, not true is false. All right. Uh, also, I want to show uh, another uh, cool uh, thing in Agda. So here we have two bool arguments. Uh, you can actually, uh, in type signature in Agda, make a name so for, for an argument, say x, y. And if there's two arguments, uh, one after another, which are the same time, type, you can just stick them uh, uh, in, in the same group. So this is a little bit more 
egg the like uh, definition. Uh, again, a note, these names, uh, the scope of these names is just the type declaration. So these variables, this X and Y has nothing to do with the X and Y uh, that we use in the, in the definition. So it can be A and B. Or because we don't use them uh, in, uh, in the type signature, we can just use underscore. We don't care. I don't care about this. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, this is making stuff a little bit more at the line. Let's, let's, uh, uh, let's construct, uh, let's play a little bit with, with this thing. I want a, a bool value, uh, my bool. So again, this is most, mostly playing around with this feature. Um, so again, here we have a, a hole which we want to, to fill with a, with a bool value. Uh, and uh, in this case, it's a little bit silly, but uh, normally we can ask uh, Agda for help and say, okay, just can you figure it out? Fill this hole automatically. And this, this is control C, control A. And Agda just goes and say, well, false, for example, fits in this hole. Uh, but maybe th this is not what we were looking for. So we can ask, uh, okay, Agda, give me a list of values, possible terms that would fit into this hole. I just put minus L and pr press control C, control where is control A? Agda auto maybe all, whatever that means. That's the, that's the command. And says, well, uh, yeah, here's false or true. Hmm. So I, 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 I can choose and if say, uh, usually we'll have a much longer list there. Say, ah, yeah, the number one is exactly what I, what I needed. I, I, press select, like minus S, one, and then type control C, control A. Uh, and then it fills that thing in. Another thing that I can do uh, in, a, in the context of a hole is, uh, is refine a hole. I know that, uh, I remember that the, the function end, it, it returns a bool and I need a bool here. And I know this is somehow this is, I, I need something that's created by ending together a uh, few things. And I can type end. So a function that returns a type that fits into this hole and refine it, which is control C, control R. And so it puts end and uh, it knows how many arguments end takes and gives me two holes to fill in. And I can also say, all right, I want to fill in this hole by, uh, by negating something. Uh, and again, put the negation function and refine. And it, know, it actually knows that it's a, it's a prefix operator, puts it here, and, uh, and here I can just do false. True. Um, Uh, all right, another thing. So something that uh, we need quite often is, uh, is uh, to uh, so-called reduce a value. Yeah, uh, one thing, Agda is a programming language. You can actually, you can actually write programs in, uh, in it, uh, in, and it's similar to Haskell. You have to define a main, which is of type IO uh, something. Uh, and, uh, and then you can, you can compile it and run it. Uh, but to be honest, before preparing for this talk, I actually never ever compiled a, an, Agda, an Agda program and, and ran it. Uh, 
it's just not what what I use Agda for. Like I use Agda for math, and and here the thing I am interested in is is actually whether the thing that I have type checks. If it type checks, that that's 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 my goal. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I will not talk about how to to run programs with Agda. I I don't think it's that uh, interesting or useful or even that it's used for that very much. But just within this uh, interactive context, which I somehow I sometimes want to know what a value is, what it reduces to, and that's Control C, Control M. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, excuse me. Is there a question? No. So control C control N and, and here I can type any expression and it will reduce it and say it's true. Um, this works uh, like globally outside of any context or within a whole and within a whole you can actually use the the variables that you you have uh, in that whole available. All right, let's do something something more interesting. Let's define natural numbers. Yeah, and I apologize if uh, if you already know uh, something like that or saw uh, some some presentation. Somehow every talk about about theorem proving or Agda specifically starts with natural numbers. Um, it's not an accident, like natural numbers are the, the uh, first non-trivial thing that you can come up with and, and reason about. And that, so it's a type. How does it define? Well, we have two ways to construct uh, a natural number. Zero is a natural number. And uh, we have a successor function. If you have a natural number, then its successor is also a natural number. Um, and uh, and yeah, and we can we can say okay. Uh, so normally. This is three, a successor of a successor of a successor of zero. So, so this is an inductive data type. It's like defined inductively. Uh, we specify how to start and how to create other values from existing values. Uh, and so basically everything we can do with uh, these natural numbers um, is, uh, is going to be defined by like induction on, on values. So let's define addition. So x plus y. What is x plus y? Again, um, so I have to define a natural number and I have two natural numbers in the context. I could choose either of them, but I know that's not what definition is. So let's do k split on, on x, right? So zero plus, uh, plus anything, well, that's, that should be anything. And a successor of x plus uh, plus something. Well, uh, uh, we know what 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 this is. But actually, let me show you uh, what Agda things can fit into this hole. And uh, it just it knows that we need to produce a natural number here, and it suggests. 
or you can just use y or x or x plus y or x plus x or maybe zero or and at number seven we have exactly what we what we want that's the that's the recursive definition of addition that we want all right let's use that um, we defined we defined addition okay let's give this a name it's three uh, and it's like try let's use it to 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 test whether our addition works let's normalize three plus three and it says it's a one two three four five six six times successor of zero that's six okay it seems to be working so this would be very very tedious to work with with numbers like this so agda has a nice syntax uh, we can use we can say right agda you have a built-in notion of naturals use our type that we just defined uh, for 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 this built-in no notion and at the checks here that we defined a type with two constructors uh, one and and they are of this form if if it's if it would, would have been something different uh, it would not uh, have accepted this this pragma uh, and now we can do the same thing reduce three plus three and it says it's six much nicer um, so here we defined um, we define natural numbers but of course normally you wouldn't you wouldn't do that uh, at the standard library has a has a notion of uh, natural numbers uh, uh, let me show you that opening for data net. All right, so data net would be the, the module that we would normally use. And uh, uh, one amazing thing of Agda, because uh, everything here, like all syntax highlighting and everything is done by the type checker. Uh, after you successfully type checked something, you can follow all these uh, things, all the symbols, all the definitions, modules uh, to, to their definition, figure out where they come from. So you, if you stand on something, you can say, okay, show me where is this defined? That's alt and dot. It will jump to the definition while well, this definition is exactly here or, or successor. It works for everything. So let's go to the data net. Uh, and uh, we jumped to the uh, at the standard data net library. And uh, there's, there isn't anything in here. Most of the uh, standard mo modules look like that, that there's some, some helper modules and the main module just uh, imports them and exports uh, f uh, further. So actually data net is defined here is data net base. Uh, and, and we can follow it further. So hmm. let me go back. How do you go back if you jumped into something that alt and comma? So dot to go forward, comma to go back and, uh, and say we want something of uh, big N. Uh, we don't even have to type it. So this is just, so I have here, I, I have it here and I can just jump to the, write the definition of, of the big N. And, uh, and it follows from all this path uh, of uh, uh, de uh, definitions, import, exports, and goes to right into the source. And this is actually, uh, defined not in the in the standard library, but into the in the Agda source. Agda source has a very very tiny uh, library of like built-in things, natural numbers, bools, 
equality. Uh, it's a very limited uh, thing, and uh, but they are defined together with uh, the database source. Uh, and we, we can actually see that uh, in Agda source, it's what's still defined like as, as NAT, an Agda st standard library re exports it as this nice Unicode character. Again, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a little bit too much. All, all this Unicode thing. Uh, I, I, I'm going to comment this uh, out because it just makes, uh, it just mixes up stuff. We'll have two pluses and all that. Let's get back to that later. So let's uh, define very quickly the next thing that, that we want. So list. So a list, uh, now it's a, it's a parameterized type. Uh, we can have lists of random stuff. So we have a type parameter now. Uh, any an arbitrary type and it's a type and we have two two constructors we have an empty list and we have and let's again do the add the thing and use the column column character not the two columns um, which is the same thing as in Haskell if we have a, an A and the list of A, uh, then we can create another list of A. Nice. Let's put, put a fixity definition. Um, all right. Let's like define the, the basic functions on it. So length of a list. Um, so what does the type of length looks in Haskell? It's list. Well, now we have lowercase, uppercase. That's so in Haskell, it would be lowercase. Uh, Two, two natural numbers. Um, so let's let's try this. So this doesn't work in Agda uh, because if we want to define it like this, um, uh, it just says what's a. I don't know what a is. It would accept. Uh, if you wanted it, wanted to define it as a like length of natural numbers, but but we want want it we want a polymorphic function here, right? So we want to do it for any possible type. How do we do this in in in, in Agda? Let me show you. Uh, so. It's that. So here I have for definitions this underscore. This underscore says, uh, again, Agda, go ahead, figure, out, figure it out. It's, it's, a, it's a so called meta variable. Uh, and uh, we can often use it in places where something is constrained by, by, by the type and just. Uh, really use it for, for that thing, for, okay, Agda, just go ahead, figure out what's supposed to go here. Uh, but, but it can also be used for this kind of unfinished things. And uh, if we did it compile, like we, we compiled it or type chat on, uh, on command line, then Agda would return with, a, with an error saying unsolved meta variables saying, okay, I couldn't figure out what goes here. Uh, in this interactive mode, it's just, it's just a hole. We cannot interact with this hole, but it's listed here at the bottom uh, together with, with other holes. 
Uh, I just wanted to have something for definition. Okay, back to type signature. So, so this is this will be our final type signature, but let's do it step by step. So, so length in Agda is actually a two argument function. And the first argument takes not a value, well, a value, but a value of the types, the type of types, an actual, actual type. And, uh, and the type of the second value uh, is, uh, uh, is, is, it depends on, on the value of the first argument. So it's a, so it's a kind of first taste of, uh, of, of dependent types. And it looks very, very similar to the Haskell thingy uh, where we could, with the appropriate pragmas, do a, a for all A. Um, something like that. But this thing uh, is, uh, so in, in some senses, this, this is the same thing, but uh, it's, in other senses, it's, it's very, very different. Like in Haskell, these two things, the, the type, uh, this, this type argument and value arguments, they are, uh, they are different beasts. In, in Agda, these two arguments, they are treated in exactly the same way. Uh, so in some sense, Agda doesn't have polymorphic functions. Everything in Agda is monomorphic. Uh, and uh, it's sometimes a blessing uh, that you can treat types the same, the same way as values. Uh, and sometimes, uh, less frequently, it's a curse that there is no real actual polymorphism uh, in, in Agda. You just pa pass around these type parameters. So, so I said, so this is the type of the length function, uh, but this is not how, how we want to, uh, to use it because this way, if we wanted to, to evaluate uh, uh, lengths of, of uh, list of naturals, we would have to use it like this, length, uh, nat, and then the actual list of naturals, say one, uh, um, no, okay. Come on, I cannot type. So we can actually type check this. All right, I don't know what, 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 what's happening here. Um, so, but this, this would be very inconvenient. Uh, even more because the, from the type of the list, it's trivial to figure out what the type of the values. So uh, here we could actually use uh, uh, underscore. Let's, let's actually finish the definition of this thing. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, evaluate it. So how do we how do we compute the length of a list? So we have two arguments: the type of values and the list itself. And we want to to write it. So okay, the we did the obvious thing: case split on the on the list. Control C, Control C. The length of the empty list is zero. Well, we can just type it like this. Uh, and the length of a non-empty list 
Well, it's just the successor of uh, uh, length of the remainder of the list. Yeah, okay, and when we have two, two arguments uh, for lengths right now. So that's it. Um, my list. Let's make a So it accepts that. So we can uh, ask it, so what's the length of uh, my list? And we have to specify that it's a list of nets. Uh, not my bool, my list. And it says it's two. But we could also just say length of my list and just figure out what's the type of its value. It's still two. Here it's, it's able to, to do that. So, so for this reason, uh, this, this is like really, really annoying to use this function like that. Uh, Agda has a way to mark uh, um, function parameters, arguments as implicit. It's still the same kind of argument, but you don't have to specify it. You can specify it if you want, uh, explicitly putting it in, in, the, in the embraces, uh, but like, it's still the same thing. But now we can, uh, we can say just length my list and it's two. Uh, and it also from the definition, the implicit arguments, if you don't use them, if you don't need them, uh, they can be figured out uh, automatically. You don't have to specify them, All right? So this is much nicer. This is how th this looks more like an actual length function, but we can make it even simpler so that this A is a type uh, is also obvious because lists the list thing, the type, type family list takes types as parameters. So I don't want to specify even this. Uh, and this is, this is too ambiguous for, for, for Agda. So here you have to say for all, like for all, and then uh, an argument name, just the name, not the type. Uh, it can be Im implicit or explicit. Uh, uh, means the same thing as as this. Okay, we have this here uh, uh, a type argument, but figure out its type. Right. So this is the actual. This is our actual length thingy function. Uh, let's do the append. Uh, and again, it works for any kind of lists. And uh, we are going to have two list arguments. So let's use this kind of shortcut, list A, and produce a list A. Right, how to define uh, that? So, yeah, so we have two lists in this, in this scope and have to produce a list, not, not very helpful, but we actually know how to do that. Let's do a case split and uh, let's see what app the uh, guesses automatically goes in, in this holes. Oh, nice. It guessed the right thing. Ah, well, that's not the right thing, Agda. Uh, let's look at what kind of suggestion does it have for us. And funnily enough, here as number seven, we have the 
the actual thing that we want. Interesting, that's, that's number seven again. Hmm. And when, when we defined additions, it, the, the right thing was also number seven. Can that be an accident? I don't know. Um, all right. So that's a pen. Uh, let's check it. Uh, so let's append my list to my list. It says one, two, one, two. It works. Right? And finally, finally we have arrived to, to the dependent part of, of Agda. Uh, so, uh, this is again standard and you might have seen it, but let's define a type of lists that uh, know their length. And sometimes called vectors, uh, let's use that, that uh, name in Agda, it's actually available uh, in the standard library is beta vec. Let's call it vector. So we want uh, something like this. Whoa. What is this? So list ha had a type parameter. Uh, so we, we specify what type of things do we put in, in the list. Vector has two things, a type parameter and something called type index. Uh, so it's a, uh, in Haskell we have something, uh, we, we can actually have similar things, uh, uh, an index type family, indexed on type level max. Uh, basically a type index, it's something that can vary across across the constructors of that type. So we can have empty vectors and uh, we have, uh, so if we have a value and the vector uh, of length n, we can const them together to get a vector of which is one longer, right? Something like this. So uh, right, there is there is only one way to create vectors of zero lengths. Uh, only one way of creating vectors of lengths one. It's taking a, a uh, a value and consing it together to your vectors of, of length zero. We know uh, that that's only the empty vector and so on. So let's type check that. Ooh, again, we have this issue. We mentioned n and it, it, there it's, it's, it's not defined anywhere. So actually the, the cons constructor for vector is now a three argument function. It has to take uh, the this length n, but fortunately, it's easy to figure out the the length of a vector from uh, from its type. So we can make this this implicit. Ah, I forgot the problem. Same kind of thing. Um, all right. Any questions so far with this definition? Uh, let's go, let's plow along uh, because we still have a lot of things. There's a lot of things I want to show you. Um, so length. So now the type signature of the length uh, 
looks something like this. All right. Um, so again, now it's not a two argument function, but, but already three argument function. Uh, so here it's still very easy to follow what A is supposed to be and N is supposed to be because the arguments to, to vector and A is, uh, is a set and N is, is an at. But uh, so sometimes with these implicit things, it's, it's, it gets very hard to, to follow. So sometimes you want to check what's the type of, of something. Uh, it's control C, control B. And uh, it tells you what it figured out. So A is a set, M is an at. They are implicit. We take a vector A, M and return an at. Uh, so what's the definition of this thingy? Um, uh, and, uh, and finally, this now is not a recursive definition because we actually have the lengths of, uh, of the vector in its type, okay? Uh, so implicit arguments, if you, if you actually want to, to uh, match or use the implicit arguments for a function, you have to, uh, in, in, in the definition, you have to specify them in the same kind of braces and, and also in order. We cannot just do that because, uh, well, it doesn't know which one it is. It would assume it's the first one. So we either put in all of them, tell the one that, that which we need, or we can uh, refer to them by name, something like this, okay? Uh, so, and while it's possible to, to do a kind of definition like this with type level naturals uh, in, in Haskell, this, this, is, uh, this is outside of scope of Haskell. Haskell cannot do this. Um, right. And uh, so, and we finally arrived to the, to the point where we can see for the first time why, why uh, dependent types are powerful. Uh, because if we want to, to uh, append vectors, so what should the type of the append for vectors look like at all? So, uh, well, we are going to have some uh, vector of some length and another vector of some other length, potentially. And we want to return the vector. Uh, well, it has the values of the same time, but what, what, what is the length of uh, the vector? Well, it's n plus m, right? So the lengths of concatenation of two lists is the sum of the lengths, uh, right? And we have this a, n, and m, and they, they all have to be arguments because otherwise I doesn't know what, what they are. Uh, okay, uh, we don't have the, we don't have, the definition and Agda complains about that. Uh, okay, so how do how do we define this? Um, we have two arguments, x's, y's, but well, uh, y's. We have these other three, but hopefully we won't need to refer to them uh, explicitly. And, uh, 
and uh, again, so we have we have this hole, uh, and now so we, when we defined when we defined uh, the list append, uh, and we were in this situation, we just had two lists in our uh, context and had to produce a list. So, but here we are not free anymore. So, for example, we can we cannot say okay, it's just the it's just the empty vector. If we try to put it in this hole, and uh, the actor will tell us that zero is not equal n plus m of type map. So you're supposed to put a, a, a vector of time of length n plus m here. An empty vector has a length of zero. It doesn't fit. Uh, so, hmm. um, I will show you some magic, but first let's do it. Let's do it by hand. We actually know how to do this. Well, we need to do a case split. Uh, so this case is easy. Uh, we are expected to pro produce a vector of length m, and we have a vector of length m in our context, the y's. Uh, and we know that this is the, actually the right thing to put here. So what do we have here? Uh, we have, uh, interesting, now we have an x of type a, a vector of length m, a vector of length m, and we need to provide a vector of length successor uh, n plus m. Um, uh, which is interesting. It means Agda already did some computation for us. So if I type control U, control C, control comma, uh, it's, it's the same thing. It just uh, instructs Agda to not simplify any, any uh, expression. So we have, uh, so this is, this is actually the, the type of the hole we have. We have the successor of m plus, uh, m plus m. And just Agda went ahead and looked for the definition of the plus. And uh, it's, it's figured out if, if you add the successor of something, something that's that's the successor of the sum of the two things, and simplify the thing for us, uh, which is very helpful. Uh, I will show you in a moment why. But we know we have to. Well, if we look at the definition of append, we want something exactly like this. Um, uh, so it's a. Uh, Let's let's actually put it here by hand. Yes, it works. So the definition of append and the append is exactly the same. Um, uh, I show you why it's why it's a little bit magical. So first thing that I want to show is. Uh, is that Agda could have figured it out for us. Uh, I can just pray, pray, press the, the magical Agda figure out what goes in here, control C, control A, um, and tells, well, no solutions found. You have, you have these things in the context and I cannot create anything from them. Uh, but we can tell Agda that, okay, be a, li be a little bit more smart. I allow you to split on, uh, uh, do a case split on any of the variables that we have, minus C, and then press control C, control. Uh, and Agda did a, 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 a kind of shitty job coming up with the names for arguments. So it named this X1 and this X2. And we know that the proper names would be X and X's. 
But otherwise, uh, and it actually put in the implicit arguments here to tell that this is for the zero case, this is for the successor uh, case, and we named this thing X. It should have been M. So the names that Agda came up for, for the arguments are shitty, but it actually figured out the correct definition. Um, it's, so it, it's not the case that this is the only possible definition. We are not that constrained by types, but we are constrained uh, quite enough that the simplest definition for, for V append, uh, the only one that uh, Agda can find in its time limit, uh, and the one it, it actually finds very quickly is the correct one. Uh, so this is the one, this is the first magical thing uh, which happens this. Uh, let me show you what the other magical thing is. So we defined uh, we defined addition here, right? So what what would happen? Uh, and I ju just want to point out that this definition is not symmetrical in its two arguments. We we add in two natural numbers, and we know that addition is commutative, but uh, we defined it in in terms of recursion on the first argument. We could have just as easily came up with the, with the other definition, which something looks something like this. X plus zero is X, and X plus suck Y is suck X plus Y. This is as good as a definition for, for, for plus. Uh, but now, if I try to compile this thing, uh, it doesn't compile anymore. So this definition is, is good for plus, and, and this definition of, uh, uh, of vector append was good for, for uh, concatenating vectors, um, but not together. Why? Why is that? What is happening here? Uh, let's take a look. Ah, this is not what I wanted. I want to comment things out and make them into holes. All right. So we, we did a case split on the on the first argument. Uh, and now Agda expects us to fill in this, this right-hand signs. So now let's check what, what are we expected to put in uh, this hole. And Agda tells us uh, that, okay, it expects something. Uh, what is that? We have two things, like a vector of length zero and a vector of length m. So there uh, results should be a vector of zero plus m, uh, and uh, and we have in our context a vector of uh, length m. But now Agde is stuck because it doesn't know anymore that zero plus m is is m uh, because we changed the definition of addition, and now the addition matches on the on the second argument. And the second argument is just uh, uh, is, is, is a variable. So if it tries to, to figure out what, what this reduces to, this doesn't reduce to anything other than itself because the plus is, is recursive in the second argument now. So let me show you that. If I put, if I put M plus zero, and try to normalize that. What is M? 
Oh, it's not that. The length of y is not in scope, but we can put it in scope. Um, so, uh, right. So there is uh, in a, in a in a context of a, of a whole, we can put any expression in this whole and and not tell Agda Agda accept this, but ask it to just. Um, tell us what its type is. So we can try to put y's here and say, uh, yeah, I need this and I have that. And these types are not the same. But I can put any expression, say n plus zero, and say to evaluate it, it's control C, control equal. No, it's control C, control semicolon. Um, or so this is what I want. Um, hmm. Well, I can just ask it to, to normalize this. So m plus zero, Agda knows that it, it's the same thing. Uh, it can just uh, apply the, the plus, do follow all the reductions and, uh, and figure it out that it's, it's zero, but zero plus m uh, is not. So, Uh, yeah, let me go back to, to the original definition and, uh, and switch to something else. Okay, so this thing that we tried to, to just blindly copy from how we did it for less, it worked but worked for some very non-trivial reasons. In particular, because our addition is defined in, uh, in terms of recursion on the first argument, and this append is defined in terms of recursion on the first argument. And we can switch both and it would work, but we cannot switch just one. All right, so, um, it looks like I, I, I severely uh, overestimated the, the, uh, the amount of material I'm uh, uh, I can cover uh, in one and a half hour. So I'm going to wrap up uh, in, in a moment, but I just want to show you very quickly. So this was Agda, what cock looks like and talk may be uh, one or two sentences about the difference. Uh, so let's go to actually the solution and look at the at some cock thing. So uh, so cock stems from a different uh, family of functional programming languages, not from Haskell, but from the ML family. Its syntax is, follows uh, way more closely the ML syntax. So for example, the convention here, it's the types uh, begin with a lowercase letter and the constructors begin with an uppercase. Uh, and we have this match uh, and everything. So this is the definition of, 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 of factorial. Uh, the other uh, thing, difference, very important difference, is how cock works. Uh, let me switch to 
Yeah. So, uh, Cork uh, you has a very, very different concept of interactivity. It's not that we write all the definition and then type check. But we write definitions one by one and go uh, uh, for uh, one by one and type check them. So we can import this thing, write the definition of factorial, and then I'm pressing Control C, Control N here, and then say D check this, and it checks the, that, accepts that uh, it type checks, uh, and now you can use it, and you can interactively uh, um, type check an expression. You can compute an expression and, and see the results in this bottom right window. Yeah, instead of following along, uh, like uh, I cannot just jump to the definition of math here, Cock uh, does things differently. I can print any definition. Um, and it says that NAT is an inductive definition. It's here set is again, the type uh, defined uh, with two constructors, O, which is a NAT, and S, which is uh, a NAT to NAT functions. So the same thing, just instead of zero, we have capital O, instead of SUC, we have capital S. Another thing that uh, Cock is uh, designed for is you can program in this uh, dependently type language with proofs and everything, and then extract your code uh, into some other programming language, which has, say, highly optimized uh, compilers and everything, uh, erasing all the, all the uh, type and proof data, which is which does not exist in the target language. So, uh, so for example, we can uh, extract a cock uh, function into Haskell and then use it in, in our Haskell project. By the way, Agda also compiles to Haskell and, uh, uh, and uh, it's possible to use it together with Haskell. Koch has many different target languages. Originally only OCaml, it's written in OCaml and uh, uh, and but now Haskell and, and others. So, so here the syntax is a little bit funny. Um, we have all these braces and semicolons, but it's it, it produces valid Haskell. So for example, let me show you um, uh, a funny thing that's possible to do with, uh, with Cock. And it's mostly a gimmick. Uh, say, how, you, how do you define reverse of a list? Well, reverse of an empty list, well, it should be easy to figure it out. Reverse of a uh, list with the head x and tail x is prime. Well, it's reversion of some list, figure it out, uh, plus a one element list of, at the end. Uh, and we can just say, okay, this is the definition. Um, Cock figure out the, 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 the things uh, which we left uh, as, as holes. And it figures it out, for example, because we, it, we see that it can actually reverse the list. Um, uh, as I mentioned, in this case, this is a gimmick. It's again, uh, in the same way as in, uh, in Agda's examples, these holes are not pinned down by types. It's just the thing that, that Koch found first happened to be the right thing. Uh, but in many situations, uh, for example, if we were working with, uh, with vectors and had some lemmas in, in, in context, uh, the definition would be pinned down and, uh, and we could, could uh, 
do it this way. Um, so, so we had this this funny thing letting Cog figure out the the stuff, uh, and uh, we can ask. Okay, you figured out some function. What's what's it in Haskell? And here is the whole thing uh, that it gets. So for reverse, we had to define the append function, and this is the append, and this is the reverse. And again, the syntax is a bit funky uh, with the braces and semicolons instead of indentation. And uh, uh, using colon here in, instead of infix operator, but that's fine. It's, a, it's, a, it's an automated code generation. Um, why is this a powerful thing? Because later we can prove stuff about, about our append function and, uh, and our reverse function. For example, we could like fully specify what, what the reversing a list means. Here we have a, a theorem that if you reverse the list twice, you have to get back the original list. And we define the code in, uh, in, in Coq. Then we, we prove uh, a bunch of theorems about it. Now we are convinced that uh, it's correct, but we can use the, the, the actual uh, functions later in some, in some real, real world, world code um, in Haskell, for example. And uh, this is not just a gimmick. There is uh, this thing uh, called uh, at uh, project at INRIA, uh, a fully certified optimizing C compiler uh, written in Coq and extracted. Uh, um, and you can actually use it in, in production. It has like different target architectures and everything. And based on that, there's an even more ambitious project, this verified everything, which has uh, as a goal, like verified hardware, verified compiler for the hardware, verified operating system and libraries and everything. And of course it's extremely ambitious, but uh, a very interesting project nonetheless. All right, so, um, yeah, I, I covered like, uh, like, uh, uh, 25% of things that I wanted to cover, uh, but we are out of time. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, for questions maybe. And, uh, and then we can wrap up officially, but I'm going to stay, stay here. If anyone is interested uh, in anything, then, then uh, we can discuss it um, in an informal settings, setting. Not that, the, all right, I'm going to stop now. Uh, any questions? How do you, uh, sorry, can you hear me properly? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, um, how do these, how does Adam Cobb compare to something like the Lean Fear Improver? Like, what's the fundamental difference there? Um, so, the thing is, I cannot answer that question. I don't know Lean. Uh, I can, uh, I know pretty well, say by now, Agda, Cock, and uh, and Hall. Um, I'm not familiar with the Isabel uh, branch of Hall's higher order logic theorem provers. Uh, uh, more with the Hall too. Uh, so, uh, so both Cock and uh, and Agda are 
like a, a branch on the the Martin Love uh, uh, dependent type theory um, kind of approaches to logic, which I wanted to talk about, but uh, but was too slow to do it. It uh, approaches like formalizing math and and everything with with dependent types. Like a proposition is a type, and uh, the like the values of the type uh, are the the kind of terms that prove that this this proposition is true. Um, so they are they are the same in that in that sense. Uh, but like Koch has a, a well-defined extension for, uh, of Martin Luff type theory called calculus of inductive constructions, which is well studied and uh, and has a formal proof uh, that it's uh, sound. So if if we accept like set theory, uh, which we are quite confident in as like in terms of math, uh, we know and uh, we accept that Koch is bug free, which is a little bit uh, um, bigger requirement, but it's, it's still, it has a, it has a core, which is, which is relatively small and well, well understood. Uh, we are confident that Whatever we prove uh, in uh, in Koch is actually is actually correct. Agda is much much more of a research project. Uh, Agda, uh, in its past, was and uh, I'm not sure about the current state. A few times it turned out that the logic of Agda is inconsistent, like. Uh, um, so, the, for example, the co-pattern part of the Agda was, was too strong and you could prove anything with it. And now it's fixed. Uh, but, but so Agda is not a sound uh, logic. If you, um, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't actually use and uh, for for any real world uh, uh, formal specification effort, uh, and this is the main reason. The other reason is is it is it's uh, kind of buggy and slow. Um, and still, for example, for our research thing, we are using Agda because its logic is just so much more expressive. Than, uh, than logic of cock. Yeah, it may be, uh, it might be unsound and, uh, and uh, it, uh, it might be buggy and, uh, but yeah, I also know Haskell and I can sometimes maybe, um, so far I, I was just reporting bugs in Agda, but in the future I might be able to fix the bugs. Uh, so, yeah, so Agda, uh, to be frank, is not suitable for like real world important formalization uh, thing, but it's, it's so powerful and expressive that even with all of its shortcomings, and there's quite a few, uh, it's still, it's, it was still the best choice for us to, 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 to work in Agda. I don't know how much this answers your question. Um, no, thanks. That's great. That yeah. answers it. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Koch, on the other hand, is is big and uh, and there is like important math done in Koch and important uh, formalization projects done in Koch. Other questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, one thing that I wanted uh, to include uh, very importantly. So uh, I might or might not give you some, 
some feeling what it uh, what it feels to work with with these systems. They are very different. Uh, both are both Koch and Agda are quite powerful. Uh, both are frustrating at times. Um, so what are what are good ways to learn them? And for Koch, there are two books which are seemingly not about learning Koch. One is called uh, Software Foundations by uh, Bruce Pierce, what, what's his name? I forgot. Now it's a multi-author uh, endeavor. Um, so it's a book, it's well written. It's uh, very uh, beginner friendly. Um, it's like, it's a joy to, you, you, re, you, learn, you will learn about, about software, how to design software, what it means to write correct software, but also about Coq. This is actually, uh, I think, the, the best way for someone, some beginner to learn Coq. If you are uh, a bit braver or ha have some experience, uh, uh, then I would suggest uh, Adam Chipala's book, Certified Programming with Dependent Times. It again, doesn't look like, uh, um, a book about cock, but it is. Uh, so, so if you are not afraid um, and uh, of math and uh, like, um, I don't know. So it's it's a bit steeper, uh, but I would actually say this this is one of the best technical books I ever I ever read. Um, so and unfortunately, I don't know anything about uh, anything like this for uh, for for Agda. There is the Agda PLFA, yes, Programming Language Foundations in Agda. So it's a book. Again, all three books are available for free on the on the internet. But this is this is like the Agda book is not. It's like, it's slow and boring and, uh, and kind of sometimes misses the point. So you can learn Agda uh, from it, but it's not a nice, not an enjoyable experience. And, and there's like a lot of uh, like tutorials and talks on the internet um, but nothing which is not, nothing comprehensive and beginner friendly for Agda. At least I haven't find any, found anything. Yes, there was a question. Sorry, I, I interrupted. So I was just asking was, did you say certified programming? Uh, that book was one of the best technical books you've read. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes, the certified programming with dependent types. The, the second book, book here. Uh, um, I put it second because it's not that beginner friend, but you can, you can totally read it knowing just Haskell without knowing any, any um, Haskell or ML or functional programming language. I don't think it's, it's suitable, but if you know Haskell, uh, it's, it can, you can totally learn just from that, but it's a, uh, it's like, it's, it's a very interesting, like intellectually engaging thing, uh, but not easy. It wasn't easy for me. Yeah. So my suggestion, if you want to really start doing something like this, learn for fun or for work, start with the, one of the two cog books, uh, and in parallel, apply the, like learn, read some tutorials and, and, uh, and learn Agda by experimenting with it. Yep. I had another question. Um, mm -hmm. So also in the cock example, we saw a little bit of these proof tactics mm -hmm. uh, yeah. when you briefly skipped over it. How does this compare to Agda? How, how do you do these kinds of things there? Um, so, 
Uh, so one thing, let me, uh, desktop. let me just step through a proof uh, very quickly. So what does it mean here? Let's, let's look at this one. This is like the, the, the easiest thing. It's very easy to read the type of this thing. Say, uh, for any type and, and any list of, uh, of that type, if you append the empty list to the end, you get exactly the same thing, right? So you jump here and you get into this kind of interactive theorem proving mode uh, where you have, uh, this is very similar to Agda's whole thing, just uh, the thing is switched. The goal is at the bottom and the context on the top. And you can say, oh, well, we have this quantified thing, uh, this parameter is Agda just, just uh, or Agda, cock. I just, uh, this will, the result will be a function, get the arguments into context, right? So now we have in our context the type and the list of that type and the a goal, we have to prove some equality. Well, we don't know what equality exactly is because we didn't get to that. Uh, we don't know how to prove it, um, but we'll see that in some cases it should be obvious. So how do you prove this? Well, I say, well, I, I didn't know any other way to prove things about an inductive type than just by induction. Do an induction on this axis, okay? And we will have two cases corresponding to the two, two constructors of lists. Uh, we don't have list defined here, but one is the empty list. Uh, so this case, okay, uh, we have to prove that the empty list appended to an empty list is an empty list. Well, I don't see it immediately, but I can say cock simplified. Can you simplify this expression? Just uh, normalize, reduce the applications of function as uh, while you can. And now the goal is to prove this, this equality, which is, this is the, like the defining thing of equality, both in Agda and cock. It's called reflexivity. Um, and now we are done with this case. Uh, and uh, you saw that it, it said easy in the beginning, like cock can figure it out. So the other case is inductive case when the, our list is created by like a cons, a cons of an element and, and the table. Again, we can ask cock to simplify this thing. Uh, and because uh, append was defined in terms of, of uh, uh, recursion on, on, uh, on the left argument. It can simplify this. And now we have something that we have to prove that the list that begins with A and continues with this. So it's, it's parenthesized in, in, in this way. So there are parentheses around, around this, this sub-expression. You should imagine them there. Is the same as the list with the same head and, and this tail. Hmm. But we are, so, uh, but we are in an easier situation because by induction hypothesis, we know that, uh, that this is true. And we can just say, uh, Koch, rewrite the goal using this induction hypothesis. Um, and now we again have the same thing on left hand side and right hand side and uh, and this is just reflexivity um, and we we have nothing left to to prove we are done right so this is this is how theorem proving in cock looks like uh, it's way more uh, way way similar uh, to, to what mathematicians do, at least up to some point. Eventually, uh, it gets as complicated as uh, if you are doing it with Koch, uh, do, doing with it with Agda. Um, and uh, in particular, like Koch proofs are, are a kind of weird thing, which is 
uh, easy to write and hard to read uh, because because it it's like you don't like when you write it you have this context and you are in that context and if you just read the transcript uh, you see what steps were done but you don't you don't really understand okay this rewrite was done in what context the only way to really understand the proof is to step through it uh, and uh, yeah so so it in some sense it's it's way more human friendly uh, in another sense you have to apply uh, much more uh, will and restrict yourself to not do complicated proofs uh, and do the same thing that you would do in Agda to, to refactor useful pieces into lemons and just to strive for most of your proofs should be like okay I'm doing induction on this and I'm applying this lemma and then a human can see and okay I, I, I don't follow the steps exactly but yeah I, I see that this is an induction proof and uh, the important part for for this proof with this particular lemma uh -huh. now I understand the proof I can I can like follow it in my head or on paper or something so it's an interesting it's a it's a very interesting thing uh, um, um, I don't know if any of you programmed in Perl. It's a little bit like that. Like Perl is sometimes called a, a write-only language. Uh, and uh, it's not true. You can write readable programs in Perl, but, but you have to be really uh, strict with yourself to do that. It's really, really easy to write unreadable programs in Perl, and it's really easy to write unreadable proofs in Cork. Um, I don't know. Good it's question. a very interesting thing to learn. Uh, it's much easier to start with than, than, than with Agda. But in the end, we are doing the same thing. Uh, the, all these tactics are actually creating a, a, a dependently type function term and you can get this function term it's just usually a bit ugly and uh, and contains like things like list induction and uh, equality induction so it's it's hard to it's hard to parse but all these tax tactics you we could just skip them in cock and do the same thing as uh, that we do in Agda. just write a term that proves that that belongs and the type checker just checks. Does this term belong to this dependent type? Yes, then the theorem is true. No, then you didn't prove anything and it's a type error. Uh, I don't know if this was what you were looking for, Andreas. Oh yeah, definitely, think, thank you. I think we should wrap this up and uh, uh, I don't know, officially declare this, this uh, meetup finished. Um, and uh, like have a shouting point for anyone who wants to go and have a dinner to go. Um, and as I said, I'm, I'm going to stay here until there are questions. Um, awesome, so uh, yeah, at that point, once more, uh, huge thanks for, for the talk, mm -hmm. the tutorial. And um, yeah, I'll stop the recording here and then whoever wants to hang around can hang around. <laughs>